Oh, no need to introduce yourself. I know who you are. Well-trained and disciplined, you are constantly scanning and analyzing your surroundings. Even though you're already a part of Domain 9, your unique temperament still stands out. And this must be your inseparable companion, Miss Shirley. Pleased to finally meet you in person, Executor. I'm Yanuo. Uh. Very rare for Yanunu to make such a serious comment. Executor and Shirley, does this ring a bell? The new encounter I've previously introduced is finally here! Ah, uh, it's Miss Yanuo, who taught you how to survive in the wilderness unprepared. That's right. But the scenario of being in the middle of nowhere is only an example. How to respond to a fleet of an unknown civilization is also worthy of in-depth discussion. How to communicate and live harmoniously with many elves on their land is also a topic. First, determine whether the civilization is present. Then, evaluate the level of danger in each specific situation. Ah, uh, excuse me. I digress. Glad to meet you. And thank you for looking after Breely. I look forward to working with you both. While you were on the mission in the Forbidden Hendeka County, I got myself acquainted with the basics of Domain 9. Give me a shout if you need a hand in the future. Good to have you here, Miss Yanuo. I'm feeling even more at ease now that Yanunu is here. This team can easily tackle most problems with no need for a miracle. This is not all. Another friend has been waiting for us at the Ignisville Celestial Gate. Let's rendezvous there. Another friend? Mm-hmm. We had some trouble activating the Omnium Reactor earlier. Teacher told me the headquarters would send someone to assist us. If we can all work together to locate the problem, we might find a solution. We're having trouble again? The upgrade of the Infinite Sundial is not a smooth sail after all. Well, we've had quite a few theoretically impossible situations. And challenging situations like this require us to unite as one. Well said. So, our next mission is to welcome our new friend from the High Cross headquarters. Let's roll! This must be... 23 minutes and 47 seconds. Hmm. Bleep! I have waited for 23 minutes and 47 seconds, literally. Uh? <sighs> I suppose I'll explain it. The sooner you get used to my work style, the more efficient our cooperation will be. Well, I've done some homework about my co-workers in Domain 9. Brevi, Yanuo, Shirley, and the Executor. Based on the evaluation of your previous missions, I estimated the time it would take for you to arrive once you received the news that I'd be here. Huh? So the headquarters also has access to my transcript? I sure hope it's good enough to get me some additional funding. Taking into consideration what is needed to travel to Domain 9, it's easy to figure out the right time for departure. That is, without wasting a second, the best time to achieve the greatest efficiency. Unfortunately, however, you came late. These twenty-some minutes could have been spent on something way more important. So do not let my precious time be wasted ever again, understood? Well, I should have expected this, considering you are from District 9. After all, there is no place for people with no sense of time in the algorithm arc at the headquarters. <laughs> Sorry about the wait, your highness from the headquarters. Our apologies. We are truly sorry. <laughs> Call me Plotty. Cut all the useless formalities. Lolo is very approachable. We like that.
Looking forward to working with you. Then, without further ado, let's get going. Your Highness, after you. Welcome back. A comprehensive inspection of the Infinite Sundial has just been completed, but we are unable to identify any problem. Hmm. No result from the auto-diagnosis. That's kind of troublesome. What exactly is hindering the steady supply of field energy in large amounts? The steady supply of field energy in large amounts? Previously, the Infinite Sundial was operating in a low energy supply mode due to insufficient field energy. Although it managed to provide enough energy for timestamps across the domain, it was insufficient to support the research and development of Niner's heavy machinery. With the upgrade complete and the energy crisis resolved, the Infinite Sundial should now be able to sustain a steady supply of field energy in large amounts across Domain 9. However... We experience significant fluctuations in the field energy supply whenever we attempt to operate the system at full capacity. In other words, the infinite sundial would automatically shut itself down once the amount of field energy we attempt to supply exceeds a certain limit. It sounds like an automatic safety measure, but it's not. I suspect some part of the infinite sundial is malfunctioning, so I ask Union to run the automatic diagnostic program to see. Unfortunately, we were unable to locate the problem. If we can't figure this out soon, the development of the third generation timestamp system will be further delayed. Since the automatic diagnostics returned with no results, we'll have to resort to manual debugging, trying each component one by one to pinpoint the issue. How exactly are we doing that? Let us help. Thank you, but I only have some rough ideas on what to do next. We'll need permission from Master Yu to access Tempos to perform manual troubleshooting. Then it all depends on what we find. Hmm. Things rarely turned out as planned anyway. I have learned this slowly over my time in Domain 9. So you need permission to access Tempos? Understood. This way, Master Yu has anticipated such a request. You may visit Zhen Gong at any time. What we know for sure now is that Madame Ling Han and Dr. Rubilia's hypothesis is largely consistent with the information recorded in the Dark Forms. It's beyond doubt that the forbidden Hendeka County was once a testing ground of the Blackstone civilization. All facilities there were set up to support one project, the incubation capsule that Nan Yin once touched. The dark form inside the incubation capsule keeps the data of the two most recent experiments, conducted respectively on Nan Yin and the Executor. But all records before that are severely damaged beyond restoration. These experiments were designed to transform living beings into dark wretches, or something similar. However, what exactly they were trying to achieve through this is not yet clear. Another thing we are certain about is that Nan Yin left the incubation capsule as a partially developed hatchling. Is that so? And it requires massive energy for a hatchling to mature into an adult. This is probably why Nan Yin has to take the Darkness Crystamax from the ruins. The incubation capsule can produce a steady stream of hatchlings, but the energy needed to fully mature is limited. Survival of the fittest is the law of nature. Only the strongest are here to stay. Is this how the strongest adult is selected? <sighs> Our best guesses, based on what we currently know, are still far from good. 
We desperately need more information. Other content is still being processed. Due to the huge amount of calculation involved, I'm unable to give you an estimated time for a comprehensive conclusion. Got it. Then, I shall not disturb the visits of our distinguished guests. Welcome, Miss Plotty from Hycros. I have been informed the reason of your visit. This is our first attempt to upgrade the infinite sundial in all these years. The unexpected situations you have encountered are all within reason. Jun Gong will spare no effort to assist you. Please feel free to name your needs. My guess is... Uh, perhaps the Omnium reactor is not perfectly compatible. Or there might be issues with the infrastructure during the Omnium transmission. We need access to Tempos to examine every part of the Infinite Sundial. If we can locate the problem, we can focus our efforts on solving it. How's Polo doing? We need the key to access Tempo's internal system. That's not a problem. Yun will walk you to the Tempo's control room. Understood. Ready to give a report on the current investigation progress. According to Tempos's automatic diagnostic results, there's no problems with the Infinite Sundial's hardware. Although we will need more time to perform a manual inspection, it's essentially just to confirm an answer that's already quite clear. I personally would focus our attention on the Omnium Reactor. The abnormal situation we are experiencing now may be a result of an authorization issue from Gestos's end. After extensive inspections, I, the authorizer on duty, can assure you that there was no error to speak of during Gestos's authorization process. Acknowledging and correcting mistakes early and redirecting your efforts is a good way to improve work efficiency. More or less. Um, if I may ask, what's the authorizer on duty? With clearance level 5, the administrator of Gestos's network system, responsible for monitoring all Omnium reactors serves as the rotating authorizer in the algorithm arc at Hycros headquarters. When you attempted to activate this Omnium reactor, I was the one in the algorithm arc who synchronized Gestos' network with the Infinite Sundial and approved the authorization request. Therefore, I deserve to be respected as much as Archon Elric. From now on, I'll be in charge of this operation. All objections are overruled. And my order is to keep your attention on factors within Domain 9. But our work so far has eliminated all possible causes in Domain 9. Huh. Are you suggesting an extremely unlikely miracle has happened? A miracle with a negative connotation in the science field? 
What a bummer. Hmm. Am I seriously hearing this nonsense from a scientific researcher? Do you have any sense of shame? If you insist on sticking to your ways, I shall make an exception and let you sink deeper and deeper down this hole. As far as I know, people from District 9 never learn from their mistakes. Let alone a half-baked underachiever like you, who has absolutely nothing to show other than several papers. Haven't your colleagues ever questioned your professional competence? Ahem. Dear Madame Plotty, I'm afraid you don't know Brealey that well. It's a bit harsh to jump to such a conclusion based solely on some biased background information and a brief chat. Let me make it clear. This is what I think about all of you from District 9. A nondescript bunch. Don't like it? Then prove to me you are worthy. But whatever you do, nothing can erase the shameful history of District 9 being captured by the heirs of Ida and losing a vast amount of confidential information. That included some of my hard work. Want to hear how your esteemed Archon Elric pleaded with me to redevelop the program for you back then? Huh? I think... Archon Elric is actually your equal in rank. In fact... The heirs of Ida managed to invade because incompetent executors like you completely failed in their duties. So dutifully fulfill your obligations, Brevi's bodyguard. Henchwoman, or whatever you are, young lady. Just do your job and keep the bark down. <laughs> Better watch out, your highness. I bite like a rabid raccoon. Yanunu and Plolo are having a nice conversation. Glad to see their friendship blossom. Excuse me. Um, Master Yu is waiting for us. Uh, right. We shall leave you to it. All right. Since Plolo has given her word, let's try to advance the investigation from different directions. I may need your help, Yanunu. Thank you in advance. All the abyss currents across the domain have been closed before serious damage can be caused by the darkness. The alert level in the Aquaville ruin is at its highest. No trace of Nanyin so far. The development of the third generation timestamp system is unable to progress due to the issue with the infinite sundial's energy supply. I understand. Executor and Miss Shirley, good to see you. I want to learn more about Nanyin's seizure of the Christomax of Ignisville. Sure. At that time, Nanyin seemed to be protected by a special group of darkness when drawing energy from the Christomax. Shrouded in a strange aura, they were much harder to deal with than the average darkness. We'd never seen anything like that before, but we needed to eliminate them before we could approach Nanyin. Exactly. This bunch was completely different from all the darkness before. They were not like the dark wretches Nanyin once manipulated either. Hmm. This is likely a new power Nanyin has acquired after seizing the Christomax. Some Ignisville domain guards recently reported a similar sighting of the darkness with unprecedented power near the Nesseldale camp. This could mean that Nanyin may still be in Ignisville. We must prepare ourselves in response to the recent encounters with the abnormal darkness entities. I hope you can travel to Ignisville with Ming Jing to address this matter. I understand. Executor and Miss Shirley, we are counting on you.
Liu Hua is also there. Let's help them. It's a huge embarrassment in front of Lord Mingjing. <laughs> Move your hand. Let me see your wound. Eh, no big deal. I just got nicked by the darkness and my sis went all out, smashing them left and right. Besides, Lord Mingjing and the Executor came to our aid just in time. I'm fine, seriously. Don't be childish. Show me you're not. Your wound is not going away. Move your hand. Uh, just a small cut. Don't make a scene. Your wounds! You're lucky I had some first aid training. Uh, thank you, Miss Shirley. All good now. I'm ready for another battle with the darkness. <sighs> you can play tough all you want. I'm totally fine, I promise. My invincible sister came from heaven to my rescue. Stop the nonsense. Did the darkness hit you in the head? Ouch! It hurts! You asked for it. You guys are so close. <laughs> Lord Mingjing, you must be here for the abnormal darkness. The mess Nanyin caused. This type of darkness was pretty hard to deal with. I know. We've never encountered anything like this before. Engaging them in a fight is the only way to gather accurate information on this new variant of the darkness. The Domain Guards in Aquaville need to ready themselves. We've learned a lot from this trip. Thank you. We should be the ones thanking you. You've been a great help, really. We need to report this to Lady Juchue. Please excuse us. How's Miss Lan doing? Her injury was pretty serious. The doctors advised her to rest more. But I bet she's been out and about. <sighs> I'll make sure to pass on your greetings after reporting this darkness encounter. All right. We won't delay you further. Same old? Race to Ignisville Mansion? Race? What about your injury? 
Oh, come on, sis. Are you actually worried about being outrun by someone who's injured? Wrong, Jin. Don't let me catch you. Uh... They seem to have a bit of a banter together all the time. Strong family ties. Rong Jin is definitely the more mature one between the two, but he acts like a little boy in front of his sister. Or maybe it's precisely in front of his sister that he can be a bit more playful. Uh-huh. I get him, somehow. The only difference is, I actually love to mess with my brother. For instance, I used to pour lots of lemon juice into the orange soda before offering it to him as a reward for his hard work. <laughs> Yikes. Just thinking about it makes my teeth tingle. Well, he was very strict with me, and I needed revenge somehow. Looking back, however, my brother took really good care of me, and I was always the insensible one. But you are all grown up now, Shirley. You're now a capable young lady who can hold the ground on her own. But... I'm sure he's very proud of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You two have a moment? We were just finishing up. What's the matter? Lalo and I have made some progress on the investigation. Please meet us at the Infinite Sundial. Sure. We'll be there. All right. We shall part ways here. I also have things to attend to back in Aquaville. I'll see you around. The preliminary screening has been completed, and the result is just as expected. An unknown source of interference in Domain 9 is the cause of all this trouble. It previously interrupted the communication between Gestos and the reactor, and arbitrarily took over the authorization process for the Omnium reactor, which has resulted in the current abnormal situation we are facing at the Infinite Sundial. Could it be Tempos, or the timestamp system of Domain 9? Miss Plotty. Just kidding. Now, let's proceed with our plan. Tempos is at your service. Just a moment. Um, uh, now it's my turn to report my findings. I have re-examined the upgraded Infinite Sundial's preset system. The design is the same as all the functioning towers of fantasy. However... During construction, the system was modified to better fit the actual conditions. Union is sorting out information regarding this. Another possibility here is that the upgraded Infinite Sundial is poorly compatible with the Astral Monuments and timestamps, causing interference to the infrastructures. Bianunu has left for Tianzhong Pavilion to consult Miss Mimi about this. Is there anything we can help with? Um... Our third hypothesis is that there is some limiting factor within the sundial. So, do you mind collecting the operating data of the sundial square for us? The data from one sundial square would suffice. No point in getting into details at this early stage. Any sundial square will do? Yes. Please use this device to record data. And... Um... Uh, what was I saying? That's all for now. <sighs> <sighs> the Ignisville Sundial Square is not far from here. Let's pay Miss Yulon a visit. Okay, let's go.
been a while. How's everything? Everything is fine, but we need to borrow Miss Yulon for a minute. Miss Brevi is trying to find out the cause of the Infinite Sundial's energy supply failure. There might be some inherent limiting factors, so she sent us to collect operating data of the Sundial Square. I see. Please follow me. I believe Miss Bravi is hoping to analyze and compare the difference in Sundial Square's operation before and after the upgrade of the Infinite Sundial. So, I've retrieved various data on the Ignisville Sundial Square at different times. As the field energy reserve continued to decline, the operation mode of the Sundial Square changed accordingly over time. I've included some additional data from each period. Hopefully it helps. That's very thoughtful of you, Miss Yulan. Don't mention it. It's my duty as a Sundial Guard. The volume of data is greater than I expected. I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait a bit longer. Uh, don't worry about it. We're in no rush. I hope. I heard you've found the cause of Nanyan's transformation in Hendaka County? As the former Lady Baihu, she rendered meritorious service for Donmei 9. But now she's become the culprit for all this trouble we're facing. She might have her own reasons, but... Nothing can justify her conduct. I... I just don't know what to think of her. I spoke to Master Yu about this. What did Master Yu say? <sighs> Nothing. I guess she wants me to have my own opinion, and not be swayed by anyone else, including herself. I still can't see through this. The more leads we get about Nan Yin, the more complicated the situation becomes. Don't lose heart. We don't live in a world where everything is either black or white. Uh... I think it's only a matter of time before you find the answer, Miss Yulan. We're very close to the day when the truth will finally come out. Well, thank you. Like my training, everything will work out. Just like the clouds always melt, and the mists disperse. My practice was held back by a bottleneck for a really long time. But once I broke through it, all the confusion and loss I once felt was no longer there. Huh? Does that mean... everything has something in common with practicing martial arts? <laughs> Miss Yulan, you really are obsessed with martial arts. Master Yu once called it a strong point of mine. I shall keep it up. Ah, the data transmission is complete. Here you go. Thank you. We won't waste more of your precious time. We'll head back to the Infinite Sundial. You are very welcome. What do I do? What do I do? Who would have thought the issue really wasn't in Domain 9? What do I do now? 
I was so certain. Hollow, answer me. Did I make a huge fool of myself? This is so embarrassing. Actually, I also wondered if it could be Tempos. But the communication structure of Tempos is different from that of Gestos. There shouldn't be any conflict between them. In fact, nothing in Domain 9 has what it takes to interfere with Gestos. When did you guys get here? <laughs> <laughs> Who were you talking to earlier? Was it Paolo? What Paolo? I don't know any Paolo. You must be mistaken. I've already come to a rough conclusion. I'll go and confirm with Master Yu right away. Was that...? Uh, I don't remember anything. Paula was going to share her conclusion with Master Yu. Don't you want to hear? Oh, then we better hurry. Sorry, Master Yu. The current situation at the Infinite Sundial is slightly beyond my expectations. In order to lift the current field energy supply limit, I've made some adjustments to Tempos' system. Hopefully it'll be enough to meet Domain 9's power demand for now. However, this is only a temporary measure. Not enough to support the development of the third-generation timestamp tech. I need to look into something back at the headquarters. The real cause of the problem might lie there. I promise you, I'll bring a real solution when I return to Domain 9, and it won't be long. The inspection of the Infinite Sundial's infrastructure has led to a similar conclusion. We have examined it thoroughly again and again, but no adjustment is needed. This is a great result, I suppose? Now I'm proud to announce, the upgrade of the Infinite Sundial is a success! It's time to go back to District 9 and report everything to Teacher. Or should I use the term, debrief? Thank you, Master Yu, for looking after Breely and me all this time. No problem. Thank you for your hard work. We are forever grateful for Hykros' help in solving our energy crisis. I look forward to more cooperation in the future. For example, the timestamp tech. Archon Larson of Hykros once expressed his interest in employing timestamps in Vera to help resist the darkness invasion. Mimi from Tianjiang Pavilion is already following up on this. We stand together through thick and thin. The information we have deciphered from the Dark Forms should be useful for Vera in combating the darkness. The Dark Forms we brought back? <sighs> That's right. We can now confirm that it's a similar technology to Domain 9's timestamp created and left by the alien civilization that we all know too well. The Dark Forms contain key information about the darkness. It's not an exaggeration to say that they determine the future of Domain 9. Due to limited computing power, it will take Tempos quite some time to decipher the information alone. Sadly, we simply don't have the time to wait. Master Yu, are you hoping to have Hycross's Gestos work together with Tempos? Exactly. Gestos can communicate across time and space, so technically coordinating a joint deciphering project shouldn't be difficult. I will report this to the headquarters. I believe we will soon have a response for you. Thank you, everyone. While Tempos continues to decipher, we will be here waiting for your good news. Thank <laughs> you. 
Earth's rise and fall, bringing us together again. Executor, how have you been? Your hard work, dedication, and all those moments of glory and triumph. We've captured them all. Dear Executor, please continue to write new chapters of adventure in the days to come. Icarus? Executor, Miss Shirley, it's good to see you're both doing well. The second group of reinforcement teams from Hycros has arrived in Domain 9 to assist you. We're ready to provide full support for your upcoming operations. You've really been a great help. Thank you. It seems you're already acquainted and there's no need for my introduction. That's good. Saves time. I'll briefly explain my investigation and the decision from headquarters. The cause of the abnormal authorization has been identified, and I'll provide a detailed report on the specifics later. Gestos and Tempos are working together to decipher the Dark Forms. Master Yu's invitation likely indicates an advancement in our understanding of the alien civilization. As for what the deciphered information means, I believe you all have your own answers. Nanyin, Domain 9, and our fate. That's right. Let's go. Master Yu, after re-examining the authorization process Gestos conducted on the Omnium Reactor, we've discovered the root cause of why the Infinite Sundial couldn't operate at its regular power level. Essentially, the reactor wasn't activated properly, and Gestos failed to grant it the necessary operational permissions. So, it appears that we have completed the authorization process, which should have enabled the Infinite Sundial to channel Omnium energy. But in reality, Gestos couldn't alter the operating power level. Therefore, after reaching an agreement with Tempos, we re-executed Gestos' authorization protocol. The results met our expectations, and the Infinite Sundial is now operating at full capacity, supporting the development of the third-generation timestamp system. It was a deceptive illusion. At the moment Gestos attempted to authorize the reactor, it received two similar yet distinct sets of instructions. One was Gestos' authorization command, while the other was from the disruptive factor I had previously speculated about. 
The reactor executed the latter command, which means Gesthos wasn't the actual authorizer. Hykros didn't have the authority over the Omnium reactor, making all subsequent commands ineffective. Then, how did that infinite sundial manage to start up and successfully receive the Omnium energy from Mara? That brings us to the question, what exactly is this disruptive factor? I had considered it during my investigation in Domain 9, but it was such a bold assumption, and I needed more evidence to substantiate its viability. After reviewing the headquarters documents and the archives in Aquaville, the answer seemed obvious. Tempos also possesses an authorization ability similar to Gesthos. When the Infinite Sundial requested authorization for the Omnium Reactor, it was Tempos that issued the command in response. But why would Tempos have similar capabilities to Gesthos when Domain 9 has always been isolated from the outside world? This has to do with a piece of distant history, long story short. Whether it's Domain 9, Esperia, Vera, or other regions, none of us are the original inhabitants of Ida. We migrated here many years ago aboard the spaceship Distant Beacon. It may sound romantic, but history is not a work of art, and grand space operas only exist in our imaginations. The reality is often full of hardship and sorrow, and we usually define the mistakes as lessons learned. Of course, there's nothing wrong with believing in beautiful fantasies. They give us courage to face adversity. <clears throat> Excuse me, I digress. For some reason, Distant Beacon did not land successfully, but self-destructed above Ida's orbit. Before executing the self-destruct command, it released five frontier pods. Only two of the five pods managed to land successfully on the surface, and those frontiers were our ancestors. Another two crashed, and one lost contact with the rest. Combining information from both sources, we now have sufficient evidence to prove that Domain 9 was settled by frontiers from the then-missing Frontier Pod Number 8. Domain 9 shares the same origin as Ida, which is the conjecture we have always hoped to confirm. Due to the current circumstances, Domain 9 is unable to engage in more in-depth communication with Hykros, so we're putting this topic on hold for the time being. However, in our joint investigation of the factors influencing the infinite sundial, we stumbled upon decisive evidence that supports this theory. Tempos has the authorization ability, just like Gestos. Hmm. <sighs> Maybe I... Well... You mentioned Distant Beacon. It seems that both Tempos and Gestos' authorization abilities are connected to it. Since they all originated from the same spaceship, it makes sense that they would share similar functionalities, right? Could Tempos be the supercomputer from the missing frontier pod number eight, or something like that? Great guess, Miss Shirley. I'm just getting to that part. The precursor to Hykros' Gestos was the central supercomputer Sam from Distant Beacon. Although Tempos was exclusive to pod number eight, it shared some of Sam's technology. It's not surprising that it inherited the authorization capability with the similarities in their computational structures. The issue we've encountered confirmed it. So, that's how it is. When Pod 8 made an emergency landing on the surface of Domain 9, the compartments were severely damaged, and most of the facilities became inoperable. Apart from Tempos, all the other crucial instruments and data were ultimately lost despite attempts to salvage them. After completing a basic survey of Domain 9, we discover the mysterious black jade artifacts left by an alien civilization. Naturally, our focus gradually shifted from Omnium to the unique resources found within Domain 9. Using the black jade artifacts as a foundation, Pod Number 8 pioneered a technological direction unique to Domain 9. Over generations, this technology has developed significantly and has become vastly different from the era of distant beacon. 
Who would have thought that the long-lost friends would eventually be able to reunite? Our fates, it seems, are always closely intertwined. Sorry, back to the topic. Unfortunately, now isn't the time to celebrate the reunion. We've deciphered more about the darkness in Nanyin, and we don't have much time left. As we had speculated, after Nanyin activated the incubation capsule in Hendeka County, she transformed into a dark wretch due to the darkness energy conversion. Not just any dark wretch. Dr. Rubilia thinks that she has become the hive mother of a new order of darkness, entirely under the alien civilization's control. This alien civilization coveted the adaptability and destructive power of the darkness. They wanted to harness this power for themselves, but were hindered by the darkness's unparalleled evolutionary capabilities. Subjugating the darkness and making the whole species submit to them was the only way. As you've seen, they focused on cultivating an outstanding individual to defeat the Hive Mother. And by dominating this new Hive Mother, they intended to seize control of the entire species of darkness. But they failed and suffered severe backlash. After hastily sealing the Hive Mother using Black Jade technology, they abandoned this land. This might also be why Domain 9 has been isolated from the outside world. Perhaps as a way to hide from the Hive Mother's revenge? We still have much to uncover on this aspect. <laughs> Arrogance truly is a common trait among all living beings, without exception. <laughs> but this method is not unfeasible. The current Nanyin is an extension of their will. She's seizing the Christomaxes and turning people into dark wretches, all for one reason. To expand the power of this new order of darkness, preparing for the moment to contest the Hive Mother. The soldiers that were turned into dark wretches by Nan Yin, have they become part of the new order of darkness under her control? Are they all pawns in Nan Yin's fight against the Hive Mother? I'm afraid so. This is a civil war within the darkness, and we are but minor variables that can be exploited in Nanyin's eyes. So even if we haven't made contact with the outside world or broken through the Black Jade ruins, Nanyin would still have seized the Christomaxes in them. The fate of Domain 9 was sealed when she completed the experiment. But humanity will not yield to so-called fate, despite our inherent weakness. Just like our ancestors, who were once trapped in this forgotten land and transformed it into the Domain Nine we see today. Our next step is to get ahead of Nanyin, secure the Christomax from the Aquaville ruin, and stop her from continuing the fusion. Executor, Miss Shirley, and Mr. Icarus, I hope you can continue to support this operation. It's my honor. The four heads have gathered at the Aquaville Ruin. Ban Wei Jun will guide you there. I'm counting on you. We will do our best. According to our calculations, the energy interference barrier can now fully cover Aquaville Mansion, and the test results are as expected. Unfortunately, we are unable to extend the barrier to cover the entire Aquaville region. <sighs> Until the infinite sundial is repaired, the energy transfer is limited. I understand that the barrier we have now is the result of all-out efforts from the Niners' heavy machinery. Thank you for your dedication. We'll stick to the original plan, secure the Christomax, store it in the container, and quickly move it to Aquaville Mansion. Executor, Miss Shirley, you're here. This is Miss Ban Wei Jean, the director of Niner's Heavy Machinery R&D Department. I've heard so much about you both. It's an honor to meet you. 
The pleasure is ours. Were you just discussing the operation plans for the Aquaville ruin? This mission is critical. We're in the middle of verifying the specifics of the barrier that blocks the Christomax energy. We must seize the Christomax before Nan Yen becomes aware and secure it safely within Aquaville Mansion. The energy barrier there can block and neutralize the powerful energy radiated by the Christomax. This way, Nan Yen won't be able to detect its location, buying us time to set up the third generation timestamp system. Once the timestamp system is updated, that'll be our signal to launch a counterattack against Nan Yen and the darkness. But the energy barrier only covers the Aquaville Mansion area. That means along the route from the ruin to Aquaville Mansion, we can only rely on a temporary container to block the energy emitted by the Christomax. We must ensure that nothing goes wrong with this vulnerability. Any slight mistake could undo all our efforts. It's a pity our resources are limited. Otherwise, extending the coverage to the Aquaville Ruin would be the safest. Anyway, I'm counting on you. We'll do everything we can to ensure the safety of the Christomax. Please, rest assured. Where could Nanyin be now? Why hasn't she attacked us? We haven't had any recent sightings of her. We can only estimate her possible whereabouts from the activities of the special group of darkness she controls. With the power she possesses now, she could easily wipe us out. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was her plan back at the Ignisville Ruin. She may see us as nothing more than gnats, but even the smallest insects have repeatedly disrupted her plans. That's probably why she attacked you last time. Darkness energy isn't easy to control. Overdoing it can backfire. Your escape from the ruin last time wasn't just luck. But she won't make the same mistake again. We don't have much time left. Miss Ban Wei Jean, please lead the way. Of course. Please follow me. We've cleared the darkness in the surrounding areas. This should cut off Nan Yin's ability to tap into their consciousness network and gather information here. Additionally, I've asked Master Yu to power the temporary interference barrier we've set up here with the Infinite Sundial, in hopes of minimizing the risks. Lord Mingjing has been quite thorough. I don't think we're missing anything. This is Mr. Icarus from Hycros. Here to assist with the operation. I look forward to working with you all. When this is over, I will share my experience with the team. It should really help with their guard duties. Thank you for all your assistance. Now that we're ready, let's get moving.
Ha! <laughs> 
everyone. No injuries, I hope? <sighs> A tough nut to crack, but luckily, everyone is fine. About Nan Yin? Master Yu needs to know what happened here. Let's go back to Ignisville Mansion to talk things over. Leave the Christomax escort to us. Let's part ways here. Hmm. Lord Mingjing, the Aquaville Ruin is under attack by the Darkness. Please be careful. Understood. We'll stick to the plan to fend off the Darkness and buy some time. It seems Nanyan has caught on to our intentions. We need to secure the Christamax quickly. Let me lend a hand to the soldiers guarding the Ruin. If Nanyin tries to attack there, I can help hold her off for a while. Icarus, I'll leave it to you. Stay safe. Don't worry. We'll catch up soon. We can't waste precious time. Let's pick up the pace.
We've arrived! Finally! Now we can take a moment to relax those tense nerves. <sighs> that was a close call. But thankfully, we made it. It's hard to imagine what might have happened if Nanyin was aware of our actions. Aquaville Mansion can block the energy radiated by the Christamax. But by process of elimination, she would eventually track us down here, wouldn't she? If her goal was the darkness energy within the Christamax, wouldn't destroying it and dispersing the energy prevent her from getting what she wants? In fact, we did consider a similar strategy before. I had previously asked Dr. Clive from Vera to shatter a synthetic Christamax and measure the intensity of the contained energy. Although it was just a synthetic Christamax, and its purity couldn't compare to a real abyssant Christamax, the destructive power was still alarming. The disaster and contamination caused by breaking a Christamax are more than we could handle. <sighs> I see. Once the third generation timestamp system is operational, perhaps we will have a breakthrough in our research and restart the experiments with a fresh perspective and approach. This could also help mitigate the ecological contamination caused by the darkness. We have a long, long way to go in the future. But our immediate concern is to address the threat posed by the Hive Mother and Nanyin. So, the current main focus of the third generation timestamp system development is still on eliminating the darkness. In this regard, Niner's Heavy Machinery has some updates. Please head to the R&D department later to check on their progress. My pleasure. Right. Let's secure the Christamax first. Even though the Christamax is in place, we can't afford to be complacent. The Domain Guards have cleared the darkness near the ruin, and considering the special trait of the darkness species, it's very likely that Nanyin is aware that the Christamax has been taken. Miss Bon, please take them to the R&D department to modify the timestamp system. I need to inspect the defenses around Aquaville Mansion and won't be able to join you. Please, excuse me. Please follow me, this way. Observation Tower, Niner's Heavy Machinery's R&D Department. With the decryption of the Dark Form, we now have a better understanding of Black Jade technology. We've discovered more functions of Black Jade and we're harnessing its power to suppress the darkness and integrating it into the timestamp. This ability, when paired with the abundant field energy, enables the timestamps to greatly amplify damage against the darkness. It assists the Domain Guards in combat, making their attacks much more effective. Hmm, just explaining it might not be very clear. Please place your timestamp on the control panel, and it will be upgraded soon.
Executor, how are things on your end? Just finished upgrading my drone stamp. And you? Did something happen? Uh, yes. A large number of abnormal darkness just increasing your upward age. You're trying to destroy the energy interference barrier. More than a more Mother. Did Nan Yin just find the Hive Mother's location? Yes. The moment the rift opened, I sensed the Hive Mother's strong will. She's struggling, trying to break through. Nan Yin must have entered the chamber imprisoning the Hive Mother. We have underestimated her power. She's opened the Hive Mother's chamber and spawned abyss currents across Aquaville, summoning the darkness. And it's not just Aquaville. Abyss currents are all over Domain 9 now. I've just received word that Ignisville has been hit the hardest. Miss Lan and the others must be fighting right now. Let's clear the darkness in Aquaville and then go help them. Others are holding up. I should hurry over and help.
We couldn't stop Nanyin from taking the Crystamax. Mm. Even though she took the Crystamax, it doesn't mean our efforts were in vain. Everyone, you've worked hard. She has entered the Hive Mother's chamber. The clash between them is causing a massive overflow of darkness energy. This is going to be a complete disaster. It is a risk worth taking if we want a better tomorrow for Domain 9. I just received a message from Chen Gong. Master Yu wants to see us. There must be a new breakthrough in decrypting the dark form. Hopefully, we'll find a way out of this situation. No time to waste. Let's head back to Chen Gong. Then, let's clear out the darkness here first. Please let me continue to help in Ignisville. As a newcomer, I appreciate any advice or tips from the Domain Guards. Uh, um... Let's move out! See you all later. The situation is dire, and we're running out of time. By analyzing the darkness energy emanating from the rift over Aquaville, we have confirmed that the Hive Mother is located beyond the rift. This aligns with Dr. Rubilia's postulation. The moment the rift opened, the will of the Hive Mother echoed in my head clearer than ever before. The Hive Mother is on the verge of breaking free. This message has overcome the barriers of all space and time to reach each of its progeny. This is likely why Nan Yin was so desperate to obtain the Crystamax. The Hive Mother will soon break free. She must seize the last opportunity while it remains bound by the Black Jade Ruin. According to the decrypted information from the Dark Form, the test subject will initiate an assault on the Hive Mother after its complete evolution to take over the control of the Hive Mother lineage. No matter which side wins, it will be a calamity that threatens the survival of Domain 9 and the entire humanity. Domain 9 is on the brink, but despite our limited power, we will not resign ourselves to this fate. We must intervene in this conflict and find an opportunity to turn the tide. This may be our last chance. The third generation timestamp system is fully operational. I trust you've all gotten the hang of using its power now. Yes. With its help, we've greatly improved our efficiency in dealing with the darkness. The third generation timestamp system does more than that. Its ability to stabilize space-time has also been significantly enhanced. After completing decrypting the dark form, we've gained a deeper understanding of the Black Jade technology. We've managed to replicate the methods of the alien civilization used to control the darkness by manipulating the Black Jade Ruin to reinforce the containment of the Hive Mother. This means that in our battles against the Hive Mother and Nan Yin, we can use the timestamps to intervene and harness the powers of the Black Jade Ruin. Ideally, we would seal both Nan Yin and the Hive Mother together, much like what the alien civilization did. Anyway, We'll need to make our moves based on the specific circumstances inside the Black Jade Ruin. It's unfortunate that the entrance to the Black Jade Ruin opened by Nan Yin closed so quickly. We'll have to find another way in. Dr. Rubilia, are you able to open the entrance? I'll do my best, but I can't guarantee anything if it's just me. <sighs> Maybe I can help. At that moment... I sensed it too. The special coordinates that appeared in the chaotic space-time. Is it possible to pinpoint the location of the Hive Mother and reopen the Black Jade Ruin using Omnium Energy? Could we destabilize that section of space-time with Omnium Energy to bring it into our observable range? 
If we channel Omnium energy to one spot and direct a concentrated energy burst at the target, we could, in theory, meet our objective. It seems that when it comes to the application of Omnium energy, Domain 9 and Hycros have quite a bit in common. We have tried to use Omnium energy to target weaknesses in the dimensional barrier, hoping to shatter the long-standing constraints of space-time. The Celestial Cannon was one of the attempts designed by our technicians who built the Celestial Gate. However, we had to put it on hold due to insufficient field energy. If Miss Shirley can provide the precise coordinates, this method is worth trying. Miss Plotty, what do you think? I'm concerned that the huge demand for Omnium energy could overload the Omnium reactor. I need to fine-tune the joint calculation program of Gesthos and Tempos to ensure a stable supply of energy from the infinite sundial. This will take some time. I hope we won't fall too far behind. While Miss Plotty is fine-tuning the program, Aquaville will work quickly to get the Celestial Cannon ready. It might only open the ruin for a brief moment, but it should suffice. Miss Shirley, please head to Zhang Gong later to lock down the coordinates of the Hive Mother through Tempos. Sure, no problem. I'll also join the operation this time. For the future of Domain 9, let's give it our all. This time, I won't be able to be with you. Be careful. I won't forgive you if you get hurt. Even if I get hurt, it's okay. You'll take care of me, right? Hmm? You... <clears throat> Why do I always end up having to take care of you? Are you spacing out? Surely, you've always been so strong. Thank you for always standing by my side. <sighs> it's the same for me. Searching for the meaning of my existence as an angel of clemency. That was the purpose I had in mind when we embarked on this journey together. But it wasn't that easy. Though this journey has been full of discoveries, I've yet to find that definitive answer. The one I can chase after wholeheartedly, without a single doubt. But you, you've always walked beside me, leading the way with a smile, ready to face a future brimming with endless possibilities. What will your answer be? Is it possible for me to be like you? These questions have crossed my mind time and again during my moments of doubt. But I know I can't let my doubt keep me from moving forward. If I just keep going around in circles, I'll never change anything. So, I've made up my mind to follow your lead. I might not be able to keep pace straight away, but from a distance, I can always see you up ahead. And I know, you will always be there for me. Thank you. Ah, uh, I didn't realize I've stayed here a bit too long. I have some preparations to do with Tempos, and you should probably head to Aquaville to meet up with everyone, right? Let's talk more when you're back. Surely, I... There's so much I want to share with you. About Zeke, our next journey, and you. We'll save those conversations for next time. Mm-hmm. It's a promise. Just a bunch of ordinary things. No need to make a big deal out of it. It will be okay. Even if it's the Hive Mother, I've always believed in you. I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely certain. Everything will be fine.
Let's just keep coming. They must have come here in response to the Hive Mother's call, aiming to help it break free. To completely wipe them out, we must eliminate the Hive Mother. The Hive Mother. I wonder where it and Nanyin are now. We don't have time. Let's leave this area to the Domain Guards and keep moving. Uh, it feels like the timestamp is being directed by something? The third generation timestamp is resonating with the Black Jade Ruin. The timestamp can now show us its connection with the Black Jade in a much more tangible way. Let's follow the timestamp and see. No, the timestamp can't open it. This should be the chamber imprisoning the Hive Mother. Yet I haven't sensed its presence. Is the entrance blocking all the energy? The Hive Mother must be behind it. There might be a way to open this nearby. Let's search the area thoroughly. We may have missed something. Darkness Nanyin is fighting. Is that the Hive Mother? Sure. Perhaps I can try to approach them. <sighs> the situation is more complicated than I thought. Ordinary attacks can't harm the Hive Mother. Could it be that we can't attack the Hive Mother through conventional means because we're in the what we're seeing might just be a fraction of what the Hive Mother can do. But it was sealed by the Black Jade Ruin. There must be a way to suppress it. The answer lies within this Black Jade Ruin. Yes, we need to move closer to observe and gather more information on them. Troubles have come our way. The devices here look similar to the ones we've encountered earlier. Let's activate this one too and see what happens.
just like the one that they found me. What could be the purpose of such a design? And where does the Abyss current lead after this? There's only one way to find out. Let's keep moving.
Was that? Ah, uh, Master Yu, and Dr. Rubilia. How are you feeling? Any discomfort? I think I'm fine. No noticeable issues. Still, best to have a checkup, just to be safe. Thanks for caring, Master Yu. <laughs> but why am I at Ignisville Mansion? What happened after- Ah. <sighs> Relax. Take it slow. We will try our best to answer your questions, but don't push yourself too hard. Okay. 
Nanyin has always been an extension of the alien civilization's will. Attacking the domain guards, transforming people into dark wretches. She has shattered countless families. Without a doubt, she's a criminal in Domain Nine. The pain will go away, and wounds heal over time. But scars linger on. The damage she's done will always haunt the people of Domain Nine, no matter how much time passes. Even if she didn't mean for all this to happen, even if she had no choice at the time. Yet, we have witnessed her final decision. In the end, did she save us? Not just us, the entire Domain Nine. She did what she could to buy us time. She created the opportunity for us to rewrite the future. It's up to us now to seize it. I'm still a little confused. Do you mean that she realized who she truly was at that moment? If we consider the outcome, what you said might just be the truth. In that pivotal moment, Nanyin was no longer a vessel for the alien civilization, but her true self. The Nanyin who held Domain Nine dear, bearing the weight of everyone's fate. Through her actions, she fulfilled her mission and atoned for what she's done. I... I think I might understand. Or rather, I can relate to what she's been through. She must have been fighting the imprint of the alien civilization's will all along. Okay. Even the alien civilization couldn't really defeat the Hive Mother. They only managed to seal it using the Black Jade Ruin. Based on our experiences and information from the Dark Form, I have a theory. Only a being of the same species can end the Hive Mother's life. When it was defeated, it released a massive surge of darkness energy. That was its final struggle and retaliation. If Nanyin hadn't guided that energy, we would likely have been obliterated. Nanyin guided that energy? You probably lost consciousness from the impact. At the last moment, I only sensed it faintly through the weak connection within the species. As the Hive Mother began to fade, the pure darkness energy it had amassed surged toward us. Another dominant will within the species became clearer, redirecting the energy into the Black Jade Ruin and reinforcing its seal. Did Nanyin seal herself? It was an extremely risky attempt. As the victor, Nan Yen would become the new leader of the darkness species. How she will change, and the impact this will have on the entire species, remains unknown. The most beneficial choice for Domain 9 would be to follow the alien civilization's example by sealing the new leader, which is herself. According to the decrypted dark form, the Hive Mother once sealed will remain dormant for a very long time. Although we haven't completely wiped out the darkness, Domain 9 now has time to recover and find ways to rewrite our future. How is Nanyin now? She is very weak, barely noticeable. That's all I can sense right now. Okay. The Hive Mother is currently in a state of dormancy, but the darkness will continue to be drawn to Domain 9. However, Without the Hive Mother's guidance, they shouldn't pose any serious threat. Eliminating the darkness will undoubtedly be a long and enduring process. But we, along with our predecessors and future generations, will keep fighting this battle. We still have a lot to do, like continuing our research on the darkness and field energy, as well as improving Domain Nine's defenses. We must find a more effective solution before the new Hive Mother awakens. This small window of opportunity that Nanyin gave us will not be wasted. What will happen to her? It's hard to say. Personally, I believe her consciousness may have been dissipated by that last surge of energy. This means we should prepare for the worst and see her as the new leader of our enemy and not take any chances. But in a sense, she did save Domain Nine. She fulfilled the mission that Master Luo had given her. Everyone in Domain 9 deserves to know about this. 
they can judge the rights and wrongs themselves. But one thing is certain. Everyone must take responsibility for their actions, and what Nanyin did must be held accountable. It's up to us now to shoulder these responsibilities. Okay. <sighs> Additionally, there's some bad news. Please don't panic. Your friend, Miss Shirley. She's in a critical state. Shirley? What happened? She's fallen into a coma for unknown reasons. The footage shows that she suddenly collapsed right after she helped us locate the Hive Mother. After emergency intervention, her condition has stabilized for now. But the exact cause of her coma is still unclear, and further investigation is needed. Can I... can I go see her now? Of course. We'll head back to Jun Gong together shortly. Thank <laughs> you.